Hey guys, I'm Manga here with a new video, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the power system in my comic, Apple Black. Dragon Ball has his key, Boruto has his chakra, Bleach has its Ryatsu. While slightly different, my hero and One Punch Man have their superpowers and quirks. Apple Black has impulse. If you're curious as to what my comic is about, there will be links to the plot, synopsis, settings, and the world of Apple Black, along with cool original things about my comic like wands and how they're used in my comic. This video about the power system in fact is a continuation in the series of me telling people about my comic without spoiling any key details preparing them, you guys, for Apple Black Volume 2, which is done. Wink wink. Most comics, especially within the shonen genre, have their power system, some complex, some really simple, and here I'm just gonna be explaining mine. Leaving out some cool information that i rather it be experienced through the books. Keeping this video visually pleasing, I'm gonna be drawing a type of power-up that I'll explain in further details later on in the video. For those who already keep track of the manga, yes, that is Sano at some point. So, Impulse, what is it? So if you've watched the previous videos, you have a good idea of what Black is and it's basically the substance that turns humans into sorcerers. Black in the bloodline creates an energy source called Impulse. The more in sync a sorcerer is with Black in their bloodline, the higher their Impulse levels. And the more experience one has as a sorcerer, the better the synchronization. Good synchronization allows for efficient spellcasting. So basically the force is to Star Wars as Impulse is to Apple Black. Obviously still vastly different. Here Impulse is kind of like your juice to cast spells. It's like your fuel. And the more in sync you are with the black in your bloodline as like you being one, the more in sync you are with the impulse that you have flowing within you, the more you're able to bend it to your will. So you use your impulse to cast spells, you use your impulse to activate your wands, you use your impulse to also activate cloaks, and you can use orbs to get more impulse if you run out. So impulse is something you can actually run out of, just like any other energy source, and over time, you can regain it back. For those of you enjoying these videos and you've watched the wand video especially, uh, leave in the comments what you feel your ideal wand would be, assuming you were like uh, an Apple Black OC. So for a quick refresher course, basically in Apple Black, a wand can be anything based on the sorcerer. So a sorcerer could have a dice, and this is the same example I used in the wand video where, say maybe if he rolls a one, something happens. If he rolls a two, something different happens. And, or say uh, your glasses could be your wand, and maybe one lens from the glass does something, and the other lens does something else. Maybe one lens turns into a scythe and the other lens helps disorient your opponent in some way. Uh, another example of a wand could be a guitar where maybe the music that's being played negatively affects your opponent in some way and things of that nature. So basically a wand is very very open which allows me to come up with some creative wands so there's a lot of potential with that. A sorcerer can still cast spells without a wand but a wand can be seen as something that amplifies the effects of the sorcery and can also be seen as an extension of the sorcerer. Some sorcerers don't use wands because maybe they don't need the extra juice. Some don't use wands because maybe it's inconvenient or they just don't know how to. And some maybe use it because it just makes too much sense or it makes no sense not to use it at all. So for example, if you shot laser beams out of your hands, maybe you get a wand that's maybe a gun and you can shoot laser beams through the gun and maybe the gun, the wand, amplifies the effects of that laser beam and makes it even stronger. It can get really, really complicated because sometimes it's not that straightforward. So, you know, just giving an example, say there's a sorcerer who has to lick your skin in order to turn you to stone and he can only lick your skin with his tongue. And so he can get a wand that's maybe a glove and the glove is kind of an extension of his tongue so instead of actually licking you, he can just touch you instead and turn you into stone. Much more convenient than having to lick people. So you know, list goes on, you have wands, there's cigarettes, blah blah blah. I recommend you guys check out the wand video. So, moving on. Walls of Impulse. Think of these like going Super Saiyan. When sorcerers break walls of impulse, they level up and become stronger. Ivory is the first wall a sorcerer can achieve, and then Ebony is the next. Breaking Ivory allows sorcerers cast a wider range of powerful spells that their bodies couldn't otherwise handle at its normal state. Ebony operates just like Ivory except the spells are much stronger. Breaking walls can sometimes alter a sorcerer's appearance. And that's because when you break a wall there is just this huge influx of impulse that you just might grow a tail or a pair of wings or something. If a sorcerer 
who has a master the art of wall breaking, attempts to and successfully breaks a wall, they will become unstable due to the massive influx of impulse that comes from it and as a result shorten their lifespan and would most times die afterwards. Once walls are broken, they need to be rebuilt to return back to a normal state, which is where most sorcerers fail when learning the art of wall breaking. If the walls are not rebuilt in a timely fashion to return your bodies to a normal state, the new flood of impulse surging the body could be fatal as suggested earlier. So essentially the walls of impulse are the power-ups, ivory comes first and ebony comes after. There are a lot of characters in the series who can't break either wall. When it comes to the ranking officers in Eden, a lot of lords can break ivory and then any rank above that usually can break ivory and ebony. And that's referring back to the World of Apple Black video that I did previously. Think of it like this, you can cast 30 spells. Spell 1 is weaker than spell 2, spell 2 is weaker than spell 3, spell 3 is weaker than spell 4, and so on. Your body can only handle up to spell 10, right? But then you need to break ivory to be able to cast the spells from 11 to 20, or 19, or whatever. And then you'll need to break ebony to be able to cast all of them. If you don't break ivory and you try to cast spell 11, it won't work. If you break ivory, then you can cast spell 11 to 20. However, the harder part is if you don't know how to rebuild ivory once you're done, then you could die. And the same rules apply to ebony. And that's the key part, also the really original part, is that you need to know how to rebuild the walls after you break them. If you don't rebuild the wall, all that impulse flowing in your body will be too much for your body to handle and it could cost you your life. Pretty neat, right? So a sorcerer needs to master breaking and master rebuilding. And lastly, let's talk Nirvana. Nirvana is like a sorcerer's personal heaven, but to be more specific, it's a different dimension slash alternate realm where its creator is its god, and in there the creator can do almost anything they desire. Nirvana is only achieved when a sorcerer reaches a stage of enlightenment which is more difficult than breaking any walls of impulse. One does not need to be able to break any walls of impulse in order to achieve enlightenment and create nirvana. Very few are believed to have achieved nirvana. Successfully dragging your opponent into your nirvana gives you an incredibly heavy advantage. Nirvana is strongly examined in Eden and so they have developed computer program versions used as training simulators and it's also been used for several other applications. An example of the application of Nirvana in my world is where it's been used to create something called a Nervinet, which just parallels the internet in our world. It's a way for me to have the internet without actually having the internet, and I can also have, you know, all the things that come along with that is like a social network and things like that for the characters in my series to connect. Nirvana is completely different from breaking walls of impulse. It's kind of like its own thing as a whole. Nirvana is essentially just creating this alternate realm, this new dimension. And I don't want to go into too much detail about how it's going to be used in battle. I'll kind of leave most of that to the books. But there will be some cool applications of Nirvana early on in the comic. The Nirvanet, VR, virtual reality, etc. And those will mostly be computer based. But when it comes to actual individuals being able to create Nirvana, it'll be a very, very rare thing. Even the concept of achieving enlightenment in the comic is not clear, at least not clear yet. And I think that's all the info I have for you guys in this video. The character I'm drawing here is Sano, and what I'm trying to put together is a draft of what would happen if his left arm took over his body. Uh, his left arm is the Erotus arm, which is said to be the left arm of Merlin, the god of sorcery within my world. And Sano essentially uses the arm as his wand. To know more about Sano and what, why he even has the arm in the first place, uh, I recommend you guys check out my first video, which is just what is Apple Black about, where it talks about him being this trinity, this savior, the one that will dawn the dark and infinite night. And I go into more details with the video, so I highly recommend you guys check it out. You know, as a wand. Erotus is said to be the strongest one, and Sano just has it attached to his body. So here is just a draft of what would happen if the arm took over Sano's body completely. 
The design is not set in stone. In fact, I've made several attempts in the past and I'm still figuring it out. But you know, so far so good. I hope you guys enjoyed this illustration of Sano. It's Eroda Sano. And the cool thing about Eroda Sano is actually once this happens, if this happens, when this happens, spoiler alert a little bit, uh, when this happens, it's, um, it's not even Sano anymore. It's like a completely different character. If you guys want to read the first four chapters of App Black Free, there will be a link in the description to where you guys can go do that. Or you can purchase Volume 1 with the first nine chapters. Volume 2 is coming really soon with the next nine chapters, so 18 chapters done as a whole. Apple Black is published and serialized in Sad AM. Sad AM is a digitally diverse anthology magazine that features several interesting comics like Clock Striker, Saigami, Bully Eater, and much more, including Apple Black. You can check out a free issue of Sad AM on the website or you can get five free issues if you fill out the survey regarding comic draw that I'll leave in the description as well. And now for those who already know about Apple Black, you can go vote for your favorite Apple Black character in the 2017 Apple Black popularity poll. I'll do an illustration for the top five characters that will appear in the magazine as well as volume two when I'm done. Links to everything you could possibly need, including my social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all that good stuff will all be in the description below. Don't forget to like this video so I know you guys like these kinds of videos so I can do more of them. Don't forget to subscribe and for those who watch this video to the end, I can't thank you enough. It helps a great deal. A big shout out to everyone who's purchased Apple Black Volume 1 already and those who are subscribed to Saturday AM. Don't forget to hit that bell so you stay notified each time I upload anything. But that's enough talking for one day. Please check out other videos as well because I got a lot of cool stuff on my channel. So why manga? And I'm out. Thank you.